hi everyone now we are going to discuss about phosphorus cycle which is one of the type of biogeochemical cycles phosphorus is going to be an important constituent of protoplasm and required for metabolism of all living organisms in addition it is also found in the soil however the major storehouse of this phosphorus is the rock deposits and agriculture crops contains only 0.052-0.5% of phosphorus in their tissues in the form of uh, several compounds such as uh, phytin, phospholipids, nucleic acids, phosphorylated sugars, coenzymes and the related compounds. So here the soil rich in organic matter contains abundant organic phosphorus and this phosphorus is going to be present in an inorganic form as I told you in the nucleic acids that is if you observe the uh, nitrogen bases phosphorus and the sugar moiety so the phosphorus is going to be present in the nucleic acids so which we call it as a nucleotide the polymer of nucleotides the nucleoproteins then phospholipids so phosphate plus lipids are going to be considered as phospholipids which are very very essential in the formation of plasma membrane and this phosphorus is also present in the inorganic phosphate form in the living organisms this phosphate is also going to form an essential portion of the ATP molecules which we consider it as an uh, currency of energy is ATP so here you can see N triphosphate so here ATP isn't it so here also phosphorus is very very important the hydrolysis of this ATP to ADP forms the basis of most energy transfer reactions within the biological systems animals possessing bones have large amount of phosphorus in its inorganic form however phosphorus is going to be added to soil uh, through chemical fertilizers, excreta of the animals and the organisms that are going to reside in that soil. Though there is a plenty of phosphorus present in the soil, but it is in the unavailable inorganic forms. So most of the plants are not going to get it. So in which form the phosphorus is going to be taken by the plants or obtained to the plants is by the form called as orthophosphate ions which are going to be considered as soluble inorganic forms of phosphorus. However, we have discussed about the mycorrhiza in another video very clearly that this is very useful in the conversion of insoluble form of uh, phosphate into the soluble form. So that's how the plants containing this mycorrhizal association can easily obtain the phosphorus. So here the phosphorus is going to be the one of the abundant component of the biosphere and often limits the microbial growth. And both the plants as well as the microorganisms are going to compete uh, for this phosphorus that is present in the soil. Those two, one is our plants as well as the other one is going to be the microorganisms. And this phosphate uh, or phosphorus availability is restricted by its tendency to precipitate in the presence of uh, bivalent metals like uh, metal ions like calcium, magnesium and even the ferric at neutral to alkaline pH. So the slow that means uh, large and slowly cycled reservoirs of phosphate occur mainly in the marine and the aquatic uh, sediments when compared to the soil. Small and actively cycled reservoirs of the phosphate and dissolved phosphates in the soils and waters and even the phosphate in the living and dead organic matter. So that means when we take the aquatic uh, systems or ecosystems, this uh, reservoir of the phosphate is going to be of very slowly that is getting cycled between the environment and the organism. But coming to the soil, though the percentage of the phosphate is going to be of uh, very much less, but it is going to be of uh, very uh, fastly getting actively recycled between the organisms and the environment in the form of uh, dead organic matter. So there are going to be of mainly different steps which are going to be studying this cycle of phosphorus. There are going to be two steps. One is mineralization and the second one is going to be the solubilization. So the first step that means the overall uh, cycle of phosphorus is going to be studied 
and it two steps one is going to be the mineralization where the conversion of organic phosphate or phosphorus into the insoluble or what we call as insoluble inorganic phosphorus this is going to be called as mineralization whereas the second step is going to be the solubilization where the conversion of inorganic insoluble inorganic phosphorus into the soluble inorganic phosphate so that's how we are going to have the two steps one is mineralization converting the soluble into the that means organic phosphorus into the insoluble organic inorganic phosphorus and then from here this insoluble inorganic phosphorus is going to be converted into the soluble inorganic phosphorus by the process called as solubilization so let's see those steps in detail now so coming to the first step mineralization so what is happening in the mineralization the soluble organic phosphate or phosphorus that is present in the uh, decomposed matter of the organic matter now is going to be converted into the insoluble inorganic phosphorus and this is going to be mainly occurring by the soil microorganisms which are going to produce enzymes that can attack many of the organic phosphorus compounds and release this inorganic phosphate and this process of uh, is going to be called as mineralization of uh, uh, organic phosphorus or this is going to be compared to our mineralization of the organic nitrogen compounds also and what are the enzymes that are involved in the conversion of uh, this uh, soluble organic phosphates into insoluble inorganic phosphorus are going to be mainly called as uh, phosphatase or phytase. So which are going to have a broad range of uh, substrate specificity. Okay. Then moving to the second step of uh, this phosphorus cycle that is going to be solubilization. So what is happening in this solubilization? So the conversion of inorganic phosphorus is going to be converted into soluble inorganic phosphorus. So insoluble inorganic phosphorus is going to be converted into soluble inorganic phosphorus. So here you can see that the availability of the phosphorus is going to depend on the degree of solubilization of uh, various organic as well as inorganic compounds that are going to be produced by the microorganisms in the soil and these are going to be solubilized forms of uh, insoluble inorganic phosphates which are taken by the plants as well as the fungi like uh, aspergillus then we can go with the penicillium fusarium are going to be the most important of the soil microorganism which produce substantial amount of the acids okay of uh, these uh, acids other than the bacteria and the bacteria which are involved in this uh, solubilization step are going to be bacillus pseudomonas micrococcus flavobacterium okay so like this we are going to have a group of bacteria also which are involved in this uh, solubilization step so here the overall conversion of uh, insoluble whatever the phosphates into soluble organic phosphates is going to be by the action of both fungi as well as the bacteria and the fungi are going to be uh, releasing some acids because this conversion or solubilization requires some sort of uh, acids to convert into the soluble form so that we will see in certain uh, uh, type of uh, reactions so let's see here so the overall conversion of was insoluble inorganic phosphate into the soluble inorganic phosphate by the action of acids uh, can be we can see in these reactions so let's see the first one the calcium phosphate insoluble calcium phosphate in the presence of sulfuric acid giving rise to the calcium monohydrogen phosphate fairly soluble in the water and the byproduct is calcium sulfate in the same manner this same insoluble calcium phosphate in the presence of that only it may give also the calcium dihydrogen phosphate which is going to be highly soluble in the water so that's how the calcium phosphate which is an insoluble inorganic phosphate form in the presence of the acids they are going to be converted into the soluble inorganic phosphate form then coming to the another acid like a nitric acid that is also going to have some sort of uh, uh, release of this uh, soluble as well as the 
monohydrogen which is fairly soluble as well as the dihydrogen phosphate which is highly soluble so as much as you are going to have the reactions obviously they are going to be uh, going to be dissolved in the water either fairly or highly okay so that's how the microorganisms are involved in the production of uh, insoluble inorganic phosphate into the organic that means soluble inorganic phosphate which is going to be easily dissolved in the water from which the plants are going to absorb. So here uh, if you see the, the actions of acids are going to be mainly convert the insoluble into the soluble ones is generally called as solubilization. And the particularly this is going to take place in close proximity of the root that means near to the root surfaces where sugar uh, is going to from exudates or getting converted and of the microorganisms into organic acids. That means where there are going to be a root exudates more, there these microorganisms utilize those sugar uh, soluble things and they are going to convert that into the organic acid. So in the presence of the organic acid, obviously the solubilization of inorganic phosphorus is going to occur. So that's what happening at the root region where the plants can easily absorb the whatever the phosphorus that is present in the form of soluble. Now this sol soluble inorganic phosphorus can be taken by the phosphorus okay with the help of this mycorrhiza and up from the plants either through the plant directly or the plant products it is getting entered into the animals. So after the death of these two that is plants and the animals that is getting converted into the insoluble organic phosphorus. Now this insoluble organic phosphorus on decay it is going to by the action of microbial uptake it is getting converted into the soluble organic phosphates which can be uh, converted directly into the soluble inorganic phosphorus which is the form of plants uptake or they can be of uh, mineralized into the form of insoluble inorganic phosphorus. So this is all uh, overall the cycle of the phosphorus. And we are going to have another term to discuss that is super biphosphate. So these super biphosphates are going to be of a biofertilizer which is going to supply not only the phosphorus but also the sulfur sources to the plant. So that's why we call it as a super biophosphate. The elemental sulfur is mixed with the thermophilic bacteria like thiobacillus thioxidans and are sprayed in the field rich in insoluble phosphate rocks. So the crop for example if it is going to be of enriched with phosphate rocks there if you are going to spray the bacteria called as thiobacillus oxidans. So in the presence of uh, moisture the bacteria this thiobacillus thioxidans is going to oxidize the sulfur and produce the sulfuric acid and we know that the phosphorus is going to be in the presence of acid getting uh, back into the soluble form which can be easily absorbed by the plants. So that is going to be the solubilization is occurring very easily. So that kind of the mechanism or biofertilizer is going to be called as super biophosphate. So this is all about the phosphorus cycle. Okay, thank you.